Superb Woman Sundays at 7. I am Janet Neal, the founder and queen bee at the Superb Woman Incorporated. I'm very happy that you joined us tonight. And by the way, happy Mother's Day to all of you out there who are celebrating the day. I know I've had just a fabulous day with my children and am so grateful for that opportunity. So for those of you who are just joining us for the first time and don't know what the Superb Woman is all about, let me take a minute and tell you about it. I come from the belief that women are very powerful beings and many of them do not realize it. And my hope is to change the paradigm from super women who are all about doing, 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 and oftentimes very stressed out and guilt ridden, to becoming superb women, women who are comfortable in their own skin, women who take the time to step back, to be themselves, to understand themselves, what's important, what their values are, what their strengths and their talents are, and then they utilize those put them back into the world for the betterment of all. We're all superb women. And along my path, I have been meeting the most incredible superb women. And I know for myself, when I meet somebody that's inspiring to me, it helps me grow and it pushes me forward a little bit more. So I want to share those women with you. So that's the intention of having this Superb Woman Sundays at 7. Every week you'll be introduced to another amazing woman woman that I've met along my path. So let's not spend any more time talking about me and let me introduce you to my guest today. My guest is Donna Miller of C3 Workplace. Don and I go way back. Um, we met, um, you'll hear me say this often, that I do a lot of networking. And we met at some networking event over a decade ago. And our paths crossed from time to time. Um, different things that I was doing and then we had a very serendipitous um, meeting at a point when I was looking for a change in career and she was looking for some assistance so I um, gratefully uh, worked with Donna for the last three years um, until I set out on my own as a superb woman. Donna, um, you'll hear today, has been monumental in showing entrepreneurs how to lead values-driven organizations. So welcome, Donna. I'm thrilled to have you here today. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much for asking me to join you, and happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. Glad to have you. So, Donna, tell our viewers today a little bit about yourself, like your journey, how you got to be to the place you are today. How much time do we have? <laughs> I know you. This could go on for a while. So, yeah, it could be <laughs> so I'll try to give you, um, based on what I think you are doing with the show um, and the audience that I think you have, I'm going to try to share with you what I feel is most relevant. Um, you know much of this, so you'll have to bear the story being repeated. But... For the last 20 years, I have owned um, a business center, a shared office facility. When I opened 20 years ago, the brand I opened under was Above and Beyond. Um, and you talked about values, and, and I unintentionally opened a values-driven organization 20 years ago. And about, I'm going to say, seven, eight years ago, it became um, a strategic decision to, to really align everything in my life with my values and then a couple of years ago it, it led to a full rebranding of the company from above and beyond to the brand that we now are which is C3 Workplace and the C3 stands for Connect, Collaborate, Community. Um, but in the spirit of superb women I think what I'd like to tell you is what I now understand was a superb event in just opening the business in the first place because it is a shared office facility, it's a staffed facility, it's not something that can be done um, in a bootstrapping, shoestring kind of way. So, uh, how did I get involved in this industry? People sometimes ask me that. I um, came out of school, went to work for a chemical company. I worked there for almost 10 years. I was very young. I was doing very well. I started out as a secretary and I worked in administration, then I went to uh, kind of bookkeeping and customer service and office management, and the company was um, 
a U.S. office for um, an, a European-based company, and it was so a startup mode. And the company grew and grew and grew. It was very exciting. We we went into China and did business in China, which you know was just opening up at the time. Very exciting. A lot of growth. A lot of new people. Change, change, change. All new, new, new all the time, which I loved. But about, I guess it was eight or nine years into it. Um, I just kind of woke up one day and said, chemicals, like, what am I doing selling chemicals? I, I was making a great salary, and I, as I know you know, I was driving a fabulous little red sports car as part of my package, um, but I well, just you know, thought... Priorities at the time. Yes, exactly. Priorities at the time, cars, clothes, vacations, and there were weekends where I came home with a, a suitcase from, a, from a, a business trip wash the clothes and put it in uh, another suitcase to go to a shore house. So now, we know my age at the time. <laughs> um, and, and it was, you know, it, I was doing really well, but I just, um, I guess the truth is, I was a values-driven person before I realized I was a values-driven person. Um, so after a while, I kind of woke up one day and said, chemicals, what am I doing selling chemicals? So um, I gave up the cushy paycheck. Uh, harder than that, I handed back the keys to the red sports car, and I took a position in New York City in advertising. I am a huge Mad Men fan, so this was my life stream. I was going to go to work in advertising. However, I went to work for what's called a recruitment advertising agency, which is the little boring classified ads in the newspaper. Um, that was pretty boring. Secondly, I was working for a woman who was younger than me in her first management role and was on a little bit of a power trip. So, it didn't last very long. <laughs> but, you know, again, I'm young and invincible, so um, I started looking for a position and I, I took uh, the role as a manager for a very small shared office facility. I was familiar with the concept, that chemical company I mentioned before, was in a building that had a shared office facility. And to me, it just made perfect sense because doctors and lawyers have been sharing that center part of the office forever. Why not just business owners? Um, and I guess because I had come up through both secretarial, administrative, bookkeeping, sales, I had had great exposure to, to the, the, all the functions that it takes to deliver. So um, I went to work for this uh, gentleman he was an absentee owner. When I took the position, I he was open six months. I was his third manager. Didn't see that red flag. But actually, <laughs> it really worked out well because I was really good at it. I, I found out immediately that I loved being left entirely on my own. Hmm, might be a little something to that. <laughs> um, so I liked being left on my own. I loved working with small business owners. I loved the fact that every day was different. Um, so he left me alone. You know, why wouldn't he? I, I filled the place up right away. Um, and then, because a good part of my compensation was tied to revenue and profit, and I'm like, okay, I'm full. How do I make more money? So um, I started adding on services. Um, I know you've heard me say this before, but it was a lovely six-month period where we got $5 a page to send a fax. I mean, cha-ching, it was a beautiful thing. So um, I worked for him for seven years. Originally, the deal was he was going to sell me the uh, business. Uh, I did that on a handshake. I've since come to learn that you don't operate on a handshake with anyone. Um, I'll talk about that more a little bit later, but um, I made him a very, very generous offer for the business. In fact, I would say I probably 50% overvalued the company, but my feeling was it was as close to a sure thing as you can get because I had the relationships with the clients, I had built the business up, uh, and although I felt I was overpaying, I felt it was a, a calculated risk, and, and that's what entrepreneurship really needs to be about. It's about risk but it has to be calculated risk. He said no, I was crushed, turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me because um, he slightly underestimated me. I ended up taking a course on how to write a business plan. I raised $100,000 and I opened 1.2 miles from where he used to be located. And so that was my um, 
that's how I ended up in business on my own. And truthfully, it was only until about maybe 10 years later that I looked back and realized what chutzpah and risk and, and that took to do that. And I, I guess it was a little bit of God, thank you for the naivety. Failure never entered my mind. And you know, we, you and I have talked about this many times. Your thoughts become your things. So failure wasn't an option. So failure didn't happen. Um, so that's kind of my long-winded story as to how I got from where I started to, to where I am today. Thank you, Donna, for sharing that. Um, yeah, I've heard it, but I think it's a, it bears repeating. It's, um, it's one of those stories of uh, perseverance and dedication and being very focused. I think that those messages cannot be repeated too often. Um, let me just remind our viewers that if you have a question for Donna, to go ahead and type that in and send that over, and we'll, we'll interject those as we go along. Um, so Donna, you have built an organization that um, I know you have said that originally it was not intentional but now it is a very intentional values driven organization. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Um, the original name was Above and Beyond. It was a name I had used when I had done you know, various consulting work um, and the mandate and the mission and the values for the company was always to exceed client expectations, to go above and beyond to make sure that our clients were happy. I, I have always felt that client satisfaction and staff satisfaction are intrinsically linked. You, you simply can't have one without the other. So my core values were there. I just um, don't think that I was as aware of them as a corporate culture. And that's what ended up happening, is these values started to define who we are. And when I first opened the business, not unlike if your audience are entrepreneurs, and yourself included, when you first open a business, you're it. You are the biggest revenue generator. You are the person at the front desk. You're doing all the things. So as I started to make the shift to scale my business, where I was stepping away from being the revenue producing person, the culture that I had created and needed to create became more and more important. So the values that we have always lived by are they're kind of simple. Golden rule, treat people like you want to be treated. Um, under promise and over deliver. I am a very democratic participatory manager and business owner. So everyone who is part of my team is part of the process. And I find that that helps them to take ownership of it and it helps them to feel comfortable risking, suggesting something, because that's not always comfortable for everyone. So in, in C3 Workplace, we, a couple of years ago, and you know, you were part of that crazy process of rebranding, which was fun, exhausting, crazy, fun, exhausting, crazy. Um, we really wanted to be very clear about who we are. So the C3, Connect, Collaborate, Community, what it really means to us is, it turned out how we help small businesses grow is we provide flexible office and meeting space, we provide all kinds of back office support, bookkeeping, educational networking events. But the reality is, the underlying value was that we're connectors. We connect people with what they want. So we become go-tos, whether you need, whether you're calling us for something that you think we offer, or you're calling us for something you know we don't offer because you know we, we associate with like-valued people and if we make a referral it's to someone who's like-valued. So connect, collaborate. I thoroughly believe in collaborating versus looking at the, the business landscape with a, a collaborative lens versus a competitive lens. I believe there's plenty out there for all of us and a rising tide lifts all boats and let's work together. So connect, collaborate, community. So by connecting and collaborating, we're building this amazing community of like-valued people. And it takes on an energy. And so I feel very, very blessed to have gotten very clear on what those values are and to be able to literally rebrand and redirect the company based on those values. Excellent. 
And I know having been a part of that, yes, it was a very fun and um, what did you say? What were the three things? Crazy, frustrating. It was, we laughed, we cried, we yelled. <laughs> yes, all of the above. However, um, and I'll just, you know, talk from my experience from a business. I've had several businesses and it was such a an education for me, positive education for me working for Donna because Donna really, um, She's a wonderful entrepreneur and um, really a good role model. So it was it was a great opportunity for me to learn, you know, how to start a business, how to run a business, how to infuse your business with your values. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you, Jenna. Um, so we do have a question here. Um, you had mentioned something about co-working. Um, could you spend a minute explaining what co-working is all about for those of you out there who don't know? Sure, sure. Um, co-working really, we offer workspace. We offer, in essence, four different types of workspace. We offer private offices. We offer, you all know what a private office, we offer semi-private offices. We offer meeting space, conference rooms. And co-working is really just open space. It's um, an alternative to going to Starbucks. It's a way to maintain your home office but it's a place to go when you need to get out of your house for a number of reasons. It, it could be that you have children home for the summer. It could be that there are distractions there. Um, but what we find about the open space and the co-working um, is that it's really about the energy of being around other people. It, it, it has a very positive impact. And in our facilities, our goal with that open space is to, again, foster those connections within the community. Mm -hmm. Definitely community is, is a big part of it and I know this week you are celebrating Small Business Week so yes, tell us a little bit are. about that. Yes we are. Well it is the 51st annual Small Business Week as defined by the Small Business Administration um, and so because we are our target market is small business and we believe Small business is what will drive our economic recovery. Um, statistics now are showing that 40% of all new jobs are coming from business ownership. That's not going to change anytime soon. And the reality is we are all working longer than we thought we were going to, partially for financial reasons, but also because, you know what, a lot of us really like what we do. So why would we retire? Um, so Small Business Week is celebrating all those small businesses and so what we are doing in both our locations and we have business centers in Montclair and we have business centers in Sparta, we have a week-long celebration um, that includes educational events, uh, lunch and learns, workshops, webinars, and networking events. We also, for Small Business Week, have a really great contest where Again, this entire Small Business Week celebration, I love it because it's a living, breathing example of how to incorporate collaboration into your business. All these people who are speaking are people from our community. They are presenting, sharing their wisdom with the community. We've got co-marketers who are helping us to spread the word. That includes Constant Contact, Valley National, DSM, and Paradigm Marketing. And so we pool our efforts and we all get a better result. So it's a great example of collaboration. And another great example is our contest, which is called our Small Business Wisdom Contest. And all it is is people sharing their pearls of wisdom with the rest of our community. And then they are eligible to win some great prizes, not only publication of their uh, pearl of wisdom in various places and outlets, but also We've had some amazing prizes donated by our um, co-marketers. So Small Business Week for us is who we are. So we're celebrating. Very nice. And a question did come in. Um, I know the answer, but I'll let you answer it. Um, okay. Do you work with nonprofit organizations or just for-profit organizations? Great question. We, we work with both. Um, and Janet, you know I part of all of this is um, when businesses uh, collaborate, 
they do fuel their success. Our vision is that that success will also spill into their local communities by supporting nonprofits. So we do have many ways that we can help nonprofits. Um, and as you know, I um, feel it's very important to give back. I believe that organizations need to be a force for good. I personally chair the board of the Salvation Army in Montclair. Um, that's the charity that I choose to devote my time and talent to. So yes, we absolutely support nonprofits. Excellent. So along the path, um, there, as you said, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, and we cannot do this all by ourselves. So has there been somebody along the way that has really been influential in helping you um, become the superb woman that you are today? Uh, you know, you, you, you tell me you were going to ask that question. And I have to say, I think it's very hard to I, identify one person. Uh, so I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, and I mentioned this the other day when I spoke at the Salvation Army. I realized in preparing for that little talk that my steno teacher in high school, I thought she was ancient at the time, and I was probably 50. <laughs> um, but she taught me to take pride in your work. That's become a real core value for me. I mean, she would say, type the letter, look at it, hold it upside down, does it still look good? And it stuck with me all these years later. My first boss, who um, let me, gave me all the opportunities to go from a secretary to when I left working for him, I was a marketing manager traveling nationally. Um, and Janet, I'm really not blowing smoke, but you've been a wonderful influence in my life, and we've had we've had a great reciprocal, I think, beneficial relationship. And I think that's the trick for me. Is it's a tribe. It's a tribe of people that I call upon. I have a couple of uh, female friends that I have lunch with once a month. You know, one's in insurance, one's in financial, and, and we simply brainstorm. And I think the reality is, over the years, I have to make sure I have that network of support because you are absolutely right. No one can do it, do it on their own. Um, so I, I always make sure I have a tribe, and of course, I have to thank um, my parents for instilling the work ethic in me that they did, and my sense of humor comes from my dad, so I definitely want to thank him for that. My organization comes from my mom, I want to thank her for that. So it's, it comes from everywhere, and I don't, think, I don't think I'll ever be able to pin it on just a few people. It's just so many people and so many things in it. Maybe it's a quote I read here. And as you know, I'm a lifelong student, so I'm constantly learning. So I hope to continue to be inspired. Uh, I'm sure, I, no doubt, that you will continue to be inspired and to inspire others as well. So another quality besides this um, understanding your values, understanding your strengths, um, another end result of doing this is that uh, Often, superb women start living should-free lives, um, releasing things that uh, someone else has told them is true or something that they felt they should do in their lives. Is there anything you can think of, any should, that you have released in your life? Uh, many, many, many. Um, I think that I have, I think the greatest abundance that has come in my life is when I have learned to let go. Um, whether it is empowering someone to get the job done and not micromanaging, because I used to do that. Um, whether it is letting go of expectations. You know, when you and I first started working together, my expectations were around the behavior, not the results. So to say that you should produce X, I don't believe in that. I believe I should be held accountable to a behavior plan, but I have to let go of the results because they're really not entirely in my control. Um, so, and I think, you know, on a personal level, and it's Mother's Day, so, you know, I think I can share this as well as quite, a, quite some time ago, I let go of... Um, 
being affected by what other people thought of me. And uh, that is so liberating because I know who I am and I know who I'm not. And so if someone, whether it's personal or whether it's professional, unfortunately, you know, not everyone's going to like you. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Now, that statement right there, we could have another three hours of dialogue about, you know, yeah. How yeah. do you do that? That's that's not an easy thing for people to do. Was there? Can you think of a turning point when um, when that really changed for you? Um. Yes, I think that it was really to do with uh, parenting. I think that um, it was kind of seeing behind the curtain. Someone was criticizing me for something my child was doing. Um, but they had no idea what I was doing. They were making an assumption based on kind of a surface situation. And I think, like most major change, it comes when whatever the current situation is, is simply no longer working for you. So it simply no longer worked for me to be concerned about my children and what other people thought. I decided to focus on my children and whatever other people thought they thought. Um, and it carried well into my, my business life as well. And um, you know, not too long ago I had kind of a situation in business where it came back to me that someone had said something not nice about me. And you know what? Because I am who I am and I live my values out loud the way I do, they didn't believe it. How great is that? So that's the best we can do is live our life take the high road every time and when you mess up because you do admit it apologize move on you know, I just let it all go because it's, it's just I can't please everyone so I'm not going to try to very good advice and um, yeah I've been there done that myself so yeah and it's a continuous uh, learning situation um, one phrase that helps me a lot is what other people think of me is none of my business. Ah, oh, good one. Very true, very true. Yep, that kind of has saved me a couple of times. Well, we just have a couple of minutes left here, so in the last couple of minutes, Donna, where do you see yourself heading in the future? Ah, well, where I see myself heading in the future is I believe that we can change the way small business does business through collaboration, through building community. Um, I will continue to grow my organization based on these values. It's attracting like valued people, which is extremely powerful. Um, and I will do. Um, my day-to-day -day behavior and I will let go of the outcome because I do believe the outcome for me is in God's hands. I do what's in front of me and um, I leave the rest up to you know how it's going to turn out. Um, so what's in the future for me? More locations, uh, more opportunities to help small businesses um, and to continue to have the great good fortune to put my head on the pillow each night and feel like I left the world a slightly better place. For me, it just doesn't get any better. So what I do today is what I hope to do until the day I drop. Um, and at some point, I'd like to do it part time. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donna, that's great. Um, I think you just kind of summed it all up right there, so that, that's a wonderful way to end. Um, I encourage people to go check out um, Donna's website at c3workplace.com. And if you are in New Jersey, in the Montclair or Sparta areas, please go visit their locations. You can find their addresses online. They're beautiful locations, um, wonderful um resources for small business owners, uh, for people who are thinking of starting a small business. Um, and the, uh, just to mention, the Small Business Wisdom Contest is, we've actually had entries from New Zealand. It is global, it is national, you can participate in that from wherever you are. 
perfect. Um, so thank you so much, Donna, for being my guest today. Um, and I just want to encourage viewers to check out the specials for our viewers um, that are available by going to the superwoman.com slash specials dash four dash viewers. And thank you for today and hope to see you next week, next Sunday at Superb Woman Sundays at 7. Thanks. Have a great week. Bye, everyone.